Well, thank you again, everyone, for being here this evening. I do want to recognize that we are joined by Libby Garvey from the county board. So give everyone a warm welcome, Libby Garvey. Our program this evening will explore how Arlington is responding to current economic challenges. And as many of you remember, we were actually joined last uh, June, I believe, by Dr. Terry Clower from George Mason University and Sally Durand from, uh, she's the chair of the Arlington Economic Development Commission. And they actually lay, helped us lay out some key uh, data for, uh, for this evening. Uh, one key point was that uh, Arlington's commercial vacancy rate at the time in June of 2015 was at 21.8%, uh, which is a 15 year, ab above its 15 year historical average. In some places like Roslyn, the number uh, was closer to 30%, may still be above 30%. This particularly impacts Arlington because of our historic breakdown between residential and commercial, uh, uh, excuse me, residential and commercial uh, split in local tax revenue. It's a 50-50 split. Uh, now, when Mr. Rand spoke to us, and I just spun it right there, when Mr. Rand spoke to us, uh, the split was actually moving in the direction of residential, uh, relying more on residential. It was about 52 and 48 at the time, so 48 commercial uh, revenue. So while this is still better than most jurisdictions, Fairfax County uh, at the time was about 70% residential and 30% commercial, uh, it raised an important question. What, what are the trends? What, what trends are we facing? Uh, how will this, will this vacancy rate continue to grow? Uh, will things get worse before they get better? And how are we responding to these economic challenges? Uh, ultimately, as you all know, this revenue raising uh, c uh, capacity is key for a wide range of issues, many of which we explore here at the Committee of 100. Uh, funding for schools, infrastructure, safety, quality of life. Um, Mr. Rand that evening mentioned that a 10% inc increase in the uh, occupancy rate, so a 10% so decrease in the vacancy rate uh, for Arlington would translate to about 34 million in additional tax revenue. That number is important because about 34 million is the cost of a new elementary school, which is a conversation Arlington County is having right now, just to give you a sense of, of how important uh, this, this number is. But it's not all doom and gloom, thankfully. Uh, we have the privilege of welcoming Victor Hoskins, who will tell us about Arlington's full court press on these uh, economic challenges and opportunities. I'll tell you a little bit about uh, Mr. Hoskins. He was appointed director of Arlington Economic Development in January of 2015. He has 25 years of diverse management experience, much of it related to economic de development and planning. And before joining Arlington County government, he was the Deputy Chief Administrative Officer for uh, Economic Development and Public Infrastructure in Prince George's County, uh, where he set the county's vision and strategic direction. Uh, before being in Prince George's County, uh, Mr. Hoskins served as a Deputy Mayor for Planning and Economic Development in the District of Columbia. Uh, and in that position, I can tell you about this uh, and how it informs what we're doing now, he uh, worked on or completed 87 public-private partnership projects, uh, totaling a uh, development value of about $7.5 billion. Uh, among his many accomplishments during that tenure uh, include Mr. Hoskins initiating a strategy to uh, increase the presence of the tech industry and in the uh, success of the tech industry in the District of Columbia, including opening the district's first international office in Shanghai, China. Uh, Mr. Hoskins also served as Maryland's Assistant uh, Secretary for Business and Economic Development and Vice President of Quadel Consulting uh, from 2009 to 2011, also as a Cabinet Secretary for the Maryland Department of Housing and Community Development in 2003. So as you can see, Mr. Hoskins is very familiar with this region. Um, we'll have to put him on the spot and ask him which county he likes the most. Um, and a little bit more, Mr. Hoskins had a Master in City Planning from MIT, a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology uh, and Urban Studies from Dartmouth College. Uh, as head of Arlington Economic Development, Mr. Hoskins will lead a staff of, uh, this says more than 80, but you were saying 56. Okay, we'll double check this. Um, and that will work to promote high quality development and the development of the culture of fairness for the county. Please join me in welcoming Victor Hoskins. Thank you, Brian. And I, I, first I wanna thank you for, um, for having me here this evening. Um, I, I know that um, some of you I have spoken in front of before and um, you, probably have heard um, some stories about me, but I hope I don't disappoint because it's difficult to talk to a group after dinner. <laughs> um, but let me start with um, the fact that, um, actually I'm glad that Libby's here because she has been one of the champions for economic development in the county since I've been here. And I've seen a change um, internally in the county and externally. And I think that the biggest thing is, I think everyone's kind of awakened to that there is a problem 
um, but in problems there are opportunities. Um, but before you have an opportunity, like Sally likes to say, you got to have a vision. <laughs> and, um, and, and the vision, it, you know, I, I grew up in Chicago, um, on the south side of Chicago, part of my life, and um, I love cities. Um, and it was, Chicago is the only city I've ever been in where people actually quote a planner. And um, they used to quote Daniel Burnham. And he, he'd say, make no small plans. They have no magic to stir men's blood. Make no small plans. They have no magic to stir men's blood. And essentially what he was saying is that if it's not a grand plan, don't even start to do it. Um, and he is the one really that redesigned Chicago after the Chicago fire. Um, he was, um, if, you, if, you look, if you go back in history, you will see some of his work that he drafted back in the late 1800s that is actually shaping the city today. Um, and, and in particular, uh, Grant Park, which is really the showplace uh, for Chicago's architecture. But for Arlington County, the vision is one of technology. Really, the future is technology. I mean, it, we have to embrace it. We have to embrace, and not just defense technology, actually the commercialization of a lot of technology. We are becoming an ed tech, med tech, clean tech, cybersecurity, big data analytics center for the world. I mean, that's really where we're going. The internet was invented here. GPS was invented here. Of course, this is what we can become. This is not what we are right now. This is what we can become. And that's really the vision that we've set out to, to achieve. So we've, in order to achieve this, we've been doing some things differently. And one of the things that we've been doing is we've been tapping and reaching to foreign markets. We've been working with Brazilian groups. We've been working with groups from China. Uh, we've been working for, with groups from the Middle East. And we're talking to them about investment. We're talking them about, to them about real estate development opportunities. We're talking to them about relocating businesses um, to Arlington. And what we have discovered is that there's a huge interest in Arlington for a number of reasons. One of the reasons is that, you know, we're a lot cheaper than D.C. We just absolutely are. Um, just on the tourism side, um, our hotels are about 40 percent less expensive than the hotels in the District of Columbia. But we're just one or two stops from some of the greatest places um, in, in the nation. Um, so. For us, it's really a great opportunity, but it's how do you go about exploring that opportunity? Let me start with some good news since we got some bad news last time. <laughs> so some of, the good, some of the good news. The vacancy rate in Arlington County actually, uh, for the first time in five years, actually ticked down. So, so we, our vacancy rate has been reduced. It went from 21.8 <laughs> down to 20.2. <laughs> So it dropped about 1.6%, and, and shortly after, the, there, was a, there was a press release on it, and, um, and, and shortly afterwards, I got a note from, um, from the county manager, and he said, what happened? I said, what do you think I've been working on? My God! Uh, but but we have, the, the strategy is already reaping benefits, and, and it's because we are trying to do things differently. Um, Lidl was one of, the, one of the, the, the transactions that was done differently last year. Last year, we, we put incentives into three deals. We will do more than that this year. But last year, out of the 35 deals that we closed, three of them were incented. Lidl, which is this, this company here, it's actually a German grocery store company, for those of you who aren't familiar. And they're kind of like the Trader Joe's of, um, of Europe. So, so think of it as a, as a Trader Joe's with a German accent. Of course, the president and CEO of their North America headquarters, he's like Irish. So, so it's like a really nice mix of, uh, of metaphors there. But we just had their, their welcome event this, um, this week, so that, that was nice. It was, it was great to welcome them to the community. Um, and we'll have some other things later on. But they um, leased a 217,000 square foot building that had been vacant for five years. It, it right, right down. If you think of the, if you think of the wastewater plant, <laughs> the building closest to the wastewater plant. <laughs> but, but so great about it is that there's a twin building next door that's been a, a, a vacant for about the same amount of time, and we're talking to some people about moving into that building. They're encouraged about looking at it because Lida was now occupying their building. So some of this actually builds on itself. Once you get some success, you can garner more success. Um, 1776. Um, which is it's, it's a um, it's a co-working space um, kind of I'm trying to think of a, a just think of it some people call them incubators some people call them accelerators but it's essentially a place where 
companies can go and for a very low rent um, actually um, get to utilize very, inexp very inexpensively high-end equipment and also access some high-end talent. And I will just kind of give you uh, the, um, the, the, the short story. So um, 1776 uh, opened their first office in the District of Columbia when I was there. The reason that I wanted them to come to open their office there is I had worked with Evan Burfield, who was the managing, prin managing principal. Um, I had worked with him on another project, and it was pretty good. Um, it was, it, he had guaranteed me they would pull in you know, 12 companies in 12 months, and they actually did it. But he said, Victor, we can do much better than this. We can actually do 50 companies in 12 months. And I said, really? And he told me, you know, we need about $200,000 for tenant improvements. And, and I said, don't get me fired. So we did. So we put the money into the, um, you know, you're, this is a startup, essentially. He got 300, 205 companies in 12 months and over 350 employees operating out of that location. Now, that changed the entire technology scene in the District of Columbia. Now, the District of Columbia is now a tech center. So taking advantage of that in the relationship with Evan Burfield, I said, gee, why don't you come to Crystal City? You can do some interesting things there. And he's, they've now opened an office in Crystal City. And um, the board um, was kind enough to invest um, in that, and in, in, in it's in process now. Um, it's a three-year investment, um, about $350,000 over a three-year period, depending on how well they do. They do poorly, they get less. They do well, then they get the total amount. We'll see how they do. We are very, very encouraged. They had their opening the other day. There were about 160 people at a VIP event, and then there were about 600, 700 people that came to an, um, an event that was open to the public. The next day, 25 companies signed up. So they, they're well on their way to, to helping us attract. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with some of the things that are going on in Crystal City, um, there's this thing called Tech Shop down there. 3D printing, high-end equipment, again, low-cost access for people who want to create prototypes. Um, I've seen some interesting things come out of there. Um, Eastern Foundry, which is more military-related, um, about 50 companies are located there. Um, again, it's kind of this co-working space. It's in the same area. I got to I got to tell you this one thing though that there, one of the guys is working on. Um, for those of you who have been in the military and actually carried equipment, one of the heaviest things these days. Um, and, and your equipment is actually the batteries that power your equipment. And these gentlemen are developing clothes, well, uniforms that actually generate the power. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I was like, what? I go, okay, give me one of those because I got to always charge my iPhone. And then I'm, you know, no, I, I think that there are some really not just military applications, but I do believe that there will be opportunities in the private sector. But, but 1776 is part of what they call a, a technology ecosystem that's developing. We have the tech shop to produce prototypes. You have Eastern Foundry that's connected more to military commercialization. You have 1776, which is more ed tech and med tech. Um, in addition to that, there's this place called We Work, We Live. Um, it is, it's actually, um, and again, the county uh, under the leadership of, 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 of Libby and others, have come up with a, a variance that is gonna allow us to have a building that actually has, it's part office building, it's part residential, and it's part uh, commercial. So actually, these whoever rents a unit also gets an opportunity to be able to work in the, um, in the space. Um, and then they can eat downstairs and have a contract for their meals, which means that they never have to leave the location. <laughs> you can work them to the end. <laughs> Uh, and then, of course, I mean, that's, that's, this is really unique. When you put all this together, you really are building something special. They're working on a Whole Foods down there right now. Um, what is it? Sweet Greens just signed up down there. Um, there's some great, you know, for... Not, yeah, Taylor Gourmet. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, yeah, there are actually some really nice, nice places opening up down there. So then we also have um, CEB, which is under construction in Roslyn, and we're, we're, it's moving along well. Um... These are two, uh, we, we have to, we don't have a lot of resources, so what we do is we come up with creative ways in order to facilitate um, getting leads. So, you know, a lot of economic development is really um, basic sales. 
get a lot of customers. You try to go through a process of sorting those customers out to see which ones are serious. You try to sort the serious out, serious ones out that actually going to write a check for something, and then you get them to do it. So it's kind of a sales chain. So the bigger your leads, probably the bigger your projects uh, or prospects, and then the bigger the prospects, and then the deals. So you, you really got to generate as many leads as possible. And the best leads are the qualified leads. So this, this was, these are two competitions that we put together um, in, in um, Arlington Economic Development that did not cost you, the taxpayer, a penny. That's why you're going to love these, okay? So the first one is called, um, it's called Startup Arlington. And this one was so interesting because the way that it worked was um, we talked to one of these co-working spaces. Car Properties has one of these co-working spaces, which is like 1776, which is like WeWork. And we said, would you be willing to give three months free uh, rent if we could bring a, comp a company here that may sign a lease with you? And they said, sure. And then we went to a hotel, Residence Inn, and we asked them if they'd be willing to give up um, rooms, a room for three months. And they said, sure. And so what we gave them was all this marketing, you know, space in play. And um, essentially, we ended up getting 70 applicants, 14 different industries, all industries we're pursuing, uh, and it didn't cost us anything. And the company that won is coming from Montana, okay? And I said, what kind of company could be coming from Montana? Cybersecurity. I don't know what they're doing under those hills in Montana, but, <laughs> but I don't think they're drilling for oil. I'm just saying, isn't it? So, so that was a very great outcome, and now we're, now we're really following up on the other 69 leads that we got because all of those companies were from outside of this area. This way, we don't have to fight D.C. for these or, or one of these other jurisdictions. Um, and then this international competition, this is, one of, this is a very interesting outcome. So back in March of, um, of, of this year, we hosted on a boat a group of 100 ch Chinese investors and technology companies. They were part of uh, this thing called Select USA. Select USA is a gathering of 1,200 investors and about 1,200 government folks trying to get those investors and technology companies to move to the United States. These 1,200 investors come from 60 countries and they are bent on investing money in the United States. That's really why they come together. And our federal government pulls this together for us, which is wonderful. Um, and as part of it, you can do pre-events. So we applied for a pre-event, and we did this event in cooperation with the District of Columbia, with the Greater Washington um, um, China Center, uh, with the Board of Trade, um, with Virginia Economic Development, and of course, Arlington Economic Development. And the reason I'm telling you this is because you gotta know where this all started. We met a group from China, um, and they said, listen, we'd love for you to come to Z Park. Z Park is the largest um, largest technology park in all of China. It has about a million employees, about 20,000 companies operate out of there. I figured even if my people were really bad and barely spoke Chinese, they should be able to get one of those companies. I mean, just on probability, 20,000, you gotta get one. Um, but what ended up happening is we have a person on staff who is actually bilingual. Um, she speaks Mandarin and English, obviously English. And she, um, she went over with this team and we connected with this group called Dongsheng. Dongsheng is a, is, is, it's kind of like a private nonprofit in China. And they sponsor technology uh, competitions around the world. The technology competition for, that's, gonna, that's gonna take place in 60 or 70 countries around the world, they pick specific cities and counties. Well, they picked us. Um, we developed a relationship with them and they picked us. And this is what our companies get to do. They get to compete. Um, if they win, they get $15,000. They get flown to China, and they get to compete for another $160,000. And the thing is, it didn't cost us anything for this competition. We're not paying for the prize. We're not paying. What we're doing is we're really promoting the event. And, and these are the kind of creative things that you have to do these days to beat groups like the District of Columbia. Sorry. So last year, we had a pretty good year. 35 deals, 5,500 jobs, 1.2 million square feet. Actually, that is really, really excellent. Hope to have a good year uh, this year, too, like that. Um, some other interesting things. I don't know if you know, but, you know, uh, Arlington County is the number one tourist um, destination in all of Virginia. And um, they had a pretty spectacular year. I'll get into those numbers in just a moment. But that, 
that position um, is partly because we're so close to the District of Columbia and people just go right across the river um, to the district. But we're one of the most livable places in the country. We're in the top, you know, you know, 10 for intelligence. Um, in terms of tourism, these are the numbers. Um, tourism spending's up about 6%, 2.9 billion. Um, the great thing is the revenue to the state is 100 million, but the revenue to the county is 80.7 million. So we, we generate in our tourism bureau a tremendous amount of money. Do you know how many employees run this? How many people do you think we have? We have four people working on this. That is, that is leverage. And what's so great about the money that comes from tourists is you don't pay to educate their children and you don't police them because they, and by the way, they buy your most expensive meals and they stay at your most expensive hotels. It's the greatest thing in the world. I, I mean, if we could just do tourism, double that number, right? That'll pay for some elementary schools. Um, so the way forward, these are some of the things that we're doing. We're trying to do them in, in, in conjunction with other groups. I just had a team come back from the World Tourism Market. We had not been to the World Tourism Market in, um, in, in I think, nine years. Um, and that is where all the tour operators from around the world gather to basically, um, basically sign contracts to come to markets like, like Arlington. Um, then we have a group that's leaving in about a week and a half to go to the to West Coast to chase business in Seattle, San Francisco, and San Diego. Um, the Consumer Electronics Show in, in January, I, you guys have probably heard of the Consumer Electronics Show. The Consumer Electronics Association is located here in Arlington County. We have never been to the Consumer Electronics, no, not, no, we have never been to the Consumer Electronics Show. If you, if you don't go, if you don't show up, you can't, you can't get anything. Somebody asked me, Victor, how did you guys get a quarter of a billion dollars out of China? I said, well, we went. You know, you gotta go in order to, I mean, if you don't show up, you know, I know this, half of winning is showing up. I mean, you show up, you can win, but if you never show up, this is a huge opportunity. Listen to this, 117,000 people go to this show. Forget them. 3,500 companies operate at this show. And listen to this, all 3,500 companies have to come to the same room to sign up. And guess who's gonna be sitting in that room this year, working those people, and they gotta wait, and I hear from two to three hours before they get to sign up. We will be working those people for two to three hours. They are gonna be tired of us. But you know what? It generates great opportunity because these people actually produce products, and, they, and their markets they can take advantage of, and labor force here that they can take advantage of. But that's what's so exciting. We're now going to these places. In um, South by Southwest, this is the, this is like uh, where, where, where technology and music and gaming and all kind of clash together. It's mostly millennials, and I gotta tell you something, it makes me very tired. I've been there one time, and it just made me very tired. But we got 800 leads last time we went to this thing. So it is a great place to get um, uh, technology uh, opportunities. Um, and then there's an international business mission that we're going to run in April, and then the International Conference for Shopping Centers, uh, which is the big retail conference. Um, some of the things that we're doing right now is we're also working with businesses like Omni Earth. Omni Earth is a small business. We've helped them connect with um, Ball Satellite, and um, we're actually seeing some business come out of this. I, I, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but the, essentially what we're trying to do is connect businesses to business and businesses to government. And I will end with that because I didn't want to take too long. I really wanted to leave most of the time for questions and answers. So um, with that, I'll open it up to questions. Brian. So Victor has agreed to take questions. He'll actually do it here from the podium. So if I could have um, Scott, do you mind helping with the mics? And uh, Lynn, do you mind helping with the mics? There you go. Uh, so as usual, we'll take questions and folks will have mics. If you wouldn't mind just calling folks from either side of the room, we'll do it that way so that you can have the, the podium up here. Uh, all right. so. Hi, David Ryan from Opera Nova. And my question is when you go and sell Arlington um, on, on your trips uh, nationally and even internationally. What do you tell uh, prospective people interested in Arlington County about 
the cultural and uh, the uh, and the community spirit side of Arlington. And while I'm as much a techie as anyone else, uh, I also help manage an opera company uh, based here in Arlington. So a, a big part of of when you are marketing the community, any no matter what the community is, you deal with all dimensions of the community. Um, most of the time, um, they have a pretty extensive knowledge of areas that they're looking at. And what we do is we try to find areas that, that may match their interests. What we have found recently is that a lot of the companies that we meet with are as interested as the, in the nonprofit community as they are in the business community. So you will find them with an interest in the arts. Um, you will also find them with interest in organizations that help the community, um, like, um, like Linden. Um, you, you will really, it, it's really amazing how um, mission-oriented a lot of these uh, companies are that we work with and that we recruit. So we give them as much information as they need. On the tourism side, they get a heavy dose <laughs> because it's, it's part of our profile on the tourism side. On the, on the business side, when we're dealing with a, a business transaction or a company, it's a little less. It's a little less. Any other questions? Right here in the middle. Carl Van Newkirk, uh, do you have any projections about the uh, office vacancy rate? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. Um, one of the things that we've done is we've sat down and tried to figure out um, with our current, with our, the current number of transactions that we have and the activity that we see on the horizon, it's going to take about five years, a little over five years, to get this down to its, its normal average of 10%. Because right now we're at, we're at about 20%, 20 roughly, let's call it 20%. So we've got to knock off 10% points, 10 points is about 4 million square feet. And it's not just 4 million square feet. If it were just 4 million square feet, we could do that in probably three and a half, four years. But it's actually net 4 million square feet, which means that you got to make up for all the groups that are leaving, like the TSA, um, you got to make up for the NSF because they haven't left yet. See, all of that's going to hit your pipeline. And I, I know it sounds kind of odd, but you actually have to close more than four million square feet, what you really need to do is you really need to close around six and a half million square feet in order to, um, in order to hit that 10% that, that number. So essentially, it's going to take about four, probably five to six years. And that's realistic. That's very realistic. In the back, gentleman in the back. Do you know why these organizations that are leaving are leaving, mm -hmm. and if they're leaving for the reasons that you're advancing for the, all these new people to come, you know, why aren't you able to convince them, convince the leader, mm -hmm. leavers mm -hmm. to stay? Mm -hmm. So one of the one of the big well there there are multiple there are multiple factors that are affecting our vacancy rate and and the biggest one really started years ago with sequestration I mean uh, BRAC was another big factor and and something that has been going on really for about twenty to twenty five years and we don't think about it but people who are in the industry of 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 um, of, of real estate on the on the architecture design side have seen this tendency really over the last 20 years, which is this highly mobile workforce that uses less space. Now, a strange twist of fate is that um, our government services administration has lowered the requirement for the number of square feet that a person is required to have. The lowering of that has actually, believe it or not, impacted the market in a dramatic way. And then with sequestration and the cost consciousness, um, what has happened is the GSA has been forced to do things like go after the cheapest property, even if it's inconvenient, even if it doesn't have the amenities that employees need, as long as it's the cheapest. That's really what's been going on. So you had all of these factors. And then in addition to that, you have your competition's gotten better. Um, honestly, Prince George's County is better than it was. Washington, D.C. is way better than it was. Um, Fairfax County has always been highly competitive. 
Uh, Montgomery County is trying to get their act together. So the competition environment has changed. And, and, and so when you, when you these, that's, that's at least five major factors. It is not just one transaction. It's actually a transaction in an environment. And that's the, that's the part that makes it difficult. <laughs> it's also difficult to get people to come here, even though we have a lot that is good in our county. Yes? In the back. Hi. Hi. Um, what kind of incentives are you offering to, to companies to come here? I, I, I heard you say something, sounded like almost like a build out uh, mm -hmm. yeah. incentive, but I'm wondering yeah. if it affects the tax base. Mm -hmm. So um, what we've, there, there are a couple of things that we can do. Um, one, we have this technology incentive, um, and the way it works is that um, if the employer generates a certain amount of jobs, um, then they will get um, roughly half of their business tax rebated, and it's for a, a, a number of years. And it it does affect um, it does affect the the revenues, but you got to you, you really have to think differently about working with um, with companies. And I think I think probably the best example is Boston um, um, Shopping Center. You, you guys, does anybody shop there? Okay, <laughs> more than I expected. Um, but it is, it, can we agree that it needs to be redeveloped? Yeah, okay, so oh, good. I'm glad we can all agree on that. Um, the problem with it is that it's, it's, it's reached a point, really, of diminishing returns. I mean, it, it really needs a really big turnaround. It, it's something on the order of mosaic. And the public investment necessary to make something like that happen is high, but the revenues that it generates are higher. So essentially, these are really investments that you're making. And you know, the interesting thing was that I remember when I first sat down with uh, the mayor of the District of Columbia when I, shortly after I took the position, and I was talking to him about how I go about analyzing these deals. And essentially, we basically run a return on investment analysis on all the, anytime we offer um, an incentive. And as you can tell, by only having done three out of 35 incentives last year, Arlington County's not used to doing incentives. Um, and, and we really have to get comfortable with that. We're gonna have to embrace some changes, and that's one of the changes that we're gonna have to embrace. And one that's coming up right now is actually the, the, the public-private partnership on uh, Boston Mall, which is gonna be voted on next week. I think it's, it's next Tuesday? Yes, yes. So those of you who want a new mall may wanna weigh in on that. <laughs> Any other questions? So speaking of the consent, uh, concerning the Marine, Marine. Marine. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, I'll repeat the question. Speaking of incentives, has the county um, entertained the EB-5 visa program as a consideration to develop, which is the reverse incentive? Mm -hmm. So for those of you who aren't familiar, EB-5 is actually um, part of the um, actually immigration code of the United States, it's a, that, that's why the EB-5 stands for. Um, but essentially what it is is a, a foreign investor um, invests up to, well, I think the, I think the floor is $500,000. And for that, they actually get a visa. Um, that, that's essentially, that's a, it's essentially, it's a visa for cash, basically. It's that kind of investment. Um, in the District of Columbia, we did, um, while I was there, we did, I think six different projects with EB-5 money. Um, and we were one of the most active jurisdictions in the country. Um, from China specifically, we raised a quarter of a billion. Um, and then we raised another, oh man, we matched that with some private funds uh, from Abu Dhabi. We raised um, some money from Qatar, almost a billion dollars from Qatar, about 225 million from Canada. Uh, for the Southwest Waterfront Project. So the answer is, yeah, you can do it, but you gotta put muscle behind it. You got, somebody's gotta do the work. <laughs> but yes, it's, it's, it's an opportunity, but it's, it's a lot of work. I mean, as you can see, we're developing some international relationships. Some of those relationships will turn into investor relationships. I fully expect that. I've been 
going back and forth to China for, well, since 1995 was the first time that I went. Um, in 1996, um, I helped the state of Maryland open the first state office for international trade um, in the country. We were so early on that we could not even sign a lease because they did not recognize the state of Maryland as an entity. They only <laughs> recognized the United States. So we had the lease space in the Commerce Department space. Um, that, that's how early it was. I mean, there were a lot of bicycles on the street at that time. It was really a different China. Um, but international, you really have to work on developing a relationship. So, so we're, we're working on that right now. But I think eventually we'll get there. I'm very excited about it. Yes, ma'am. China seems to invest in a lot of treasuries and a lot of real estate. Mm -hmm. yeah. Has there been any discussion and concern over that eventually China may own Arlington? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm, not being, I'm not being funny. They don't own, none of, yeah, I don't know much of Arlington they own right now except for maybe condominiums, <laughs> a few condominiums. But no, that's not likely. It's interesting, when I was in Los Angeles back in the 90s, um, actually, really the late 80s, that's when it was. Um, everyone was afraid that Japan was going to own uh, Los Angeles. Uh, what happened? They bought a lot of real estate, and they paid a lot for that real estate, and then they sold it back to us. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's essentially what happened. Um, because they view the markets differently. Um, I think China's a lot more sophisticated than that. I saw a project that they're building in downtown LA right now. Um, but they will never, that's, that's not how our country works. They can't buy our country. That's just never going to happen. Even with three trillion in reserves, and by the way, I met with the sovereign fund of China um, that, that has about a, a trillion and a half in reserves. And when I talked to them about projects, they, they, they didn't laugh. They just kind of smiled, you know, graciously and said, gee, that's, um, that's an interesting little project. I mean, they're, you know, their, their mind is, is so much beyond, I mean, in terms of the scale. They really looked at New York, and they're investing mostly in New York. Um, the projects they've invested in, in Washington, D.C., they're only a portion of the project. They're not, they don't own the whole project. But, in, but they do in New York and in, and in Los Angeles because they're large enough. You know, we really can't even get to that scale. They're looking to build, you know, two, three billion dollar projects. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Melanie Barton. Um, you mentioned med tech, and I didn't. I didn't. I might have missed it, but I was wondering what's going on in, in that area. So, um, and then one other area. The second question, unrelated, is uh, Columbia Pike, and uh, what's the status? Given no streetcar, you know, has that hurt hurt yeah. development in that area? Yeah. So uh, on MedTech, ju just one or two, I don't, I don't want to, you know, I could spend all night talking about these companies because we have some wonderful companies in Arlington. Um, Evelyn Health is probably the, really one of the most incredible companies that we do have. For those of you who aren't familiar with Evelyn Health, basically their job is to make us healthy. I love that. I mean, a, a med tech company that actually is, is designed to make you healthy. Essentially what they do is they help hospitals develop strategies for keeping their patients healthy. And it's, it's a, it's a, it's a well, they have these algorithms that essentially help them mine information about patients that have s certain types of conditions and then they execute automatically strategies for dealing with those conditions. They contact the doctors, they set up the appointments. I mean, it is a beautiful thing. And what they're really doing is they're helping drive down medical costs and helping people become more healthy. So this is, a, this is a, one of the, and the reason I mentioned this company is because it just recently went public in June. Was it June that they went public? Yeah, they're, pu they're public now. And um, they started in Arlington about four and a half, almost five years ago. And they came out of CEB, the, the, the corporate executive board that I mentioned earlier. Um, they came out of that group. And it, it is an amazing company. I think, they're, I think they have like 2,000 employees now across the country. They have about 500, 600 of those in Arlington. And it looks like they're going to double in the next three years. So, so they, we have companies like that, med tech companies, that do this data mining and work with these hospitals to, to, re, um, to reduce uh, disease and, and sickness. And then um, on your other question on Columbia Pike, so just to kind of give you a quick 
uh, what, what we've been doing with Columbia Pike, we basically been helping support them in their marketing efforts. Um, this summer, um, when they did their blues festival and other events, we actually provided uh, funds for them so that they could market to a larger area. And they told us this is the first time that they got substantial market out of Washington, D.C. So essentially, we pulled some folks across the river. Um, the other thing that we've done recently is um, we've opened up a pop-up art gallery um, in the mills, um, the Arlington Mills. And this is really important because it is it's part of trying to generate foot traffic down in that area. Um, the second thing that we're working on, uh, the third thing we're working on with them is, the, um, is a pop-up library. Um, our library system here in Arlington, as you know, is very creative. Um, and they are very excited about about this this pop up library, and it's, they got they have some great ideas. I'm really I'm really looking forward to it. it seems more like a cafe library than a you know a library, and I kind of like that. I mean, you know, I always look for a place to do some work, you know, with, with free Wi Fi. Um, and then we are um, talking to the the folks in, at Columbia Pike about a. How do I explain this? So uh, there's this French lighting company called Citalum. And they do this light, these lighting things all over the world, and they do these special kind of um, shows with lights. And you know, there's some buildings down in the Pike that aren't that attractive. Um, and what we're thinking about doing is um, setting up during the winter a kind of a, a kind of a, an interesting light show that maybe have a, a winter theme that essentially um, basically does a series of animations on a building. Um, and it is a fantastic, it's hard to explain, you have to see it to believe it, it is pretty phenomenal. But essentially we're looking at trying to work with the folks from AT&T for their little building over there that's really kind of not far from Cinema Draft actually. Um, but we, but we want to do that four, day, four evenings a week to get people to come out at night um, and it'll be family oriented and we'll have hot chocolate. And, but the, the whole point is to generate foot traffic. I mean, that's really what we're trying to do right now. And part of that is so we can prove the market. The other support we're giving them is we're helping them re re recruit retailers at the International um, Conference of Shopping Centers that I mentioned earlier. Um, we, we didn't have a lot of prep time before it, uh, for this year, but we do, for this upcoming year, we should do pretty well. And we're working with one of the major retailers, um, uh, retail brokers along there, which is Rappaport. Welcome. Yes. Um, thanks. My name is Scott Pedowitz. You mentioned the number of the deals that we have been able to close over the past nine months to a year. Mm -hmm. I'm curious what we're learning from the deals we're not closing. Um, if we're picking up any feedback about why companies chose to go elsewhere and what we might have in store for addressing some of that um, as you know, constructive. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, so one of the things um, that, that they're saying is that, well, a lot of times they don't even come and talk to us because they don't think Arlington will do incentives. So that's one of the things that it's happening out in the marketplace right now. You really have to go in and you have to compete uh, for business. Now this is not every deal, um, but this, these are a lot of deals these days. So um, there have been some deals that we actually, that we went after that frankly we got outbid by quite a bit, and that's just gonna happen. And um, I look at it this way, those aren't our businesses. So, I, you know, can I take a minute to kind of explain to you the, our, our strategy, because I think it's important. So those, in those companies that did, you know, decide to stay where they were or decided to go to another jurisdiction, they were pretty large, okay? I can, I'll, I'll give you some quick dynamics. If you get above 200,000 square feet, in the United States, that is a rare real estate transaction these days. Above 200,000 square feet is very rare. What has happened is, over time, these real estate transactions have gotten a lot smaller. And the real opportunity for Arlington, I believe, now, we are pursuing those deals above 200,000 square feet. Do not, do not think for a minute that we're not going after them. Um, we went after Blackboard, for example. They stayed in Washington, D.C. Um, we went after advisory board. They stayed in Washington, D.C. My guys in Washington, D.C. are pretty good, okay? 
And we got to stop trying to go against those guys that way. It's sort of like bike boxing out of your weight class. I mean, it really is. So I'm trying to get us back into our weight class. Now, we're still going to go in there and get, a, you know, punched out a little bit, but we're going to win some of those. But that's not where we're going to really press um, on, on, on investing because, first of all, it's expensive. And by the way, I've given you no background on myself personally, but I am, my wife would call me cheap, okay? I'm not. I'm not. I'm value-driven. I'm parsimonious. I think I might be part Scottish. <laughs> But the bottom line is that I think about every dollar as if it's mine. I'm a taxpayer, so I am conscious of every dollar. So on a value basis, I see that as being overpriced. It's like paying too much for a stock. I don't do that. When, when Facebook was 40 bucks a share, somebody asked me, Victor, are you gonna invest? I said, why would I invest in Facebook? You know, 40 bucks a share, why would I do that? When they got down to $17 a share, I got very interested. I want a value. That's just the way that I've grown up. I'm, my mother was an immigrant. I am, I, I, my value system is like from the depression. I mean, I'm, I wanna keep every nickel. So we're focusing on 200,000 square feet and down. As a matter of fact, where we're really looking is between 1,000 square feet and about 50,000 is kind of our sweet spot. We think that that's where we will get most of our opportunity. And let me tell you what's so great about that, all right? You get a company that's rapidly growing and you get them at 10,000 square feet, you got them for life. You helped them when they were young. The money means more when they're, when they're established. You know, we come in and you, you go in and you talk to some guy that has a company that's you know, doing a 500,000 square foot relocation and you say $10 million, that's the bonus that they gave their EVP of marketing, right? No, I mean, really, isn't that the truth? Okay, I don't like people to talk like that to me. <laughs> I want a little bit more respect when I talk about numbers that big. I, I am more in the range of a couple of hundred thousand dollars. I mean, that's kind of, for me, the, the right size of, if you're gonna do consistent investment, you wanna do it in that range on companies that are growing rapidly. I'll just give you a quick example. This company, Omni Earth, that I mentioned to you, okay, a year ago, they were four people, all right? Right now, they're 27 people. A year from now, there will be 60 people. These, you, see, you see the math? That's the group you wanna invest in. And by the way, you don't have to keep investing in them. You just help them grow. That's really what we're here to do. We should really help them get their permits faster. We should really help them get in their space faster. I mean, that's, you know, that is honestly the change that we have to come to grips with. If you, if you think about it, you just make the environment friendly and welcoming, that reputation will take you a long way. I mean, I don't look at us as investing, you know, like the District of Columbia or even thinking of like a $50 million fund that, you know, that we had in Prince George's County. I'm not thinking on that scale. I'm thinking on a very different scale. And again, those, those smaller companies. Did you have a question? I'm just waving. <laughs> One more question. Answered them all. No? Oh, one more. And it's not 9 o'clock. Okay, so what do you do to get the permits going faster and uh, the space faster? Our condo just did a lobby renovation, and our architect was from D.C., and our contractor was local, and they both said Arlington's the worst. We have a long way to go. So um, the interesting thing was that that was actually the reputation of the District of Columbia when I arrived in January 2011. The reputation of the District of Columbia now is pristine. They get the job done. That's a leadership issue, okay? And, that, and they've, they've, they've selected a great leader. Steve Culver is a great leader, and he is going to transform that organization. Unfortunately, when I was in the District of Columbia, that department reported to me, so I had a little bit more direct pressure for it. Here, it's a sister agency, so I have to work with them as amicably as possible and let them know, you know, help them develop a sense of urgency, because really that's, that's the issue, it's a sense of urgency. You know, time is money. It's, very, it's a very simple equation, time is money. The longer something takes, the more it costs. If you're borrowing to build something and somebody adds six months to your schedule, you now have six months of carried, additional carried interest. I mean, 
it will kill your return on investment. It will drive your investors crazy. One of the one of the positions I held, I was a senior vice president for a, a real estate equity firm. And all we did all day was worry about how fast we got a project done. It wasn't even about the size of the project. It was about the speed with which the project happened. So we do have to come to grips with that for residential as well as you know the commercial properties. And, and I think we're gonna get there. It's just gonna take time. And that's the thing, it will take time. It won't be fast, but it will happen. Thank you, Victor, very much for joining us. And uh, please be sure to keep an eye out for our December program. We'll talk about uh, healthcare in Virginia. Uh, but once again, thank you, Victor. You can give him another round of applause. And hope everyone has a wonderful evening. Thank you.